okay good morning class and uh, what we're going to start today is we're going to start on unit five which is other strategic issues and uh, what uh, we uh, the topics that we have up here is uh, the um, strategic issues in managing technology and innovation role of uh, management entrepreneur ventures and small businesses okay so we start with strategic issues in managing technology and innovation right now what is happening up here is like because of the increase in the competition and uh, the increase in the product development cycles innovation and management of technology has becoming is playing a very crucial role for the success of an organization right and uh, this must be actually this because it's playing crucial role it has to be this importance has to be emphasized that people at the very top and also by people at the middle and the lower level everyone it has throughout the organization it has to be the importance has to be emphasized and management today has an obligation not just to encourage new product development but also to develop a system to ensure that technology is used in the most effective manner keeping in mind the customers that's important okay so first thing that comes up here is where we talk of external uh, scanning which is uh, scanning uh, doing a scanning continuous scanning of the external societal and the task environment for developing new uh, developing uh, in uh, technology developing new things in technology which would help into uh, and which is applicable also for the current products or potential products and here on customers as i said earlier also plays a very vital role okay so when we talk of technological developments so there has to be a continuous effort right by the organization to not just look in uh, to see what are the competitors actually using but too much concentration on the industry where they're operating just concentrating there is not it's not a very safe idea it's very dangerous because what happens is what are most of the times developments that is happening and which is threatening a business that's coming from competitors who do not belong to their own in our own industry it's coming from other industry so one has to look into that also what other industry technologies uh, what are they using it and how it can affect uh, our own firms right so that is really important and impact of stakeholders on innovation right here when we talk of stakeholders uh, we are talking of the customers suppliers distributors uh, who are giving uh, for sources of uh, product and service improvements and these people have the maximum to gain from innovative uh, from innovative new products or services right and say they also propose new directions for product development right so how do we how to get information from them by uh, through lead users to market research and new product experimentation lead users these are people or organizations or companies which are well they are using these uh, products or services much uh, to an extensive manner before it has actually been introduced in the market so by the time it has been introduced in the market it's becoming obsolete so one has to look into it who are the lead users right for developing product development especially in case of high technology industries where things move so fast that a product becomes obsolete by the time it comes to the market okay market research that's the other way right doing a market research to actually survey the current users regarding what they would like in the new product and um, png that's procter and gamble has been successfully has been successful because of their um, the market research policy that they have right new product experimentation right so um, you can also the, the other way instead of doing a market research you can also start um, uh, looking into the potential markets with the uh, by in introducing early versions of the products see what do, what people think about it how people react to it and then start uh, working on to it okay next comes up is internal scanning internal scanning is where looking and scanning the 
internal conditions of the organizations, right? One, not just external environment is not just important, internal environment is also equally important. There has to be balance. So these are the things that has to be taken into consideration when we talk of internal scanning. That is, um, has the company developed the resources needed to try, uh, uh, try new ideas? Uh, have the managers allowed experimentation with new products or services? Have their organization encouraged risk-taking and tolerant mistakes? Are people more concerned with new ideas with def or defending their turf? Is it easy to form autonomous project teams? And also to assess how well companies' resources are internally allocated and evaluate the ability of an organization of the organization to develop and transfer new technology in a timely manner, right? In a, in a generation, in an age where uh, innovation plays a crucial role. Okay. So resource allocation issues, company has to actually make available the resources necessary for effective R&D research and development. Okay. So the intensity of a company's uh, R &D, the R and D intensity of a company uh, that is an indicator of gaining market share in global competition. Okay, uh, but the amount of money is, uh, spent on R and D varies. Time to market issues, right? So also the time plays a vital role. Other than effective management of R and D, time, right? In easy Earlier, it was, you know, it, uh, it took time to generally from inception to profitability uh, of a particular, of any R&D program was 7 to 11 years. Today, it's 60% of the innovations are done in within four years, right? Okay. Next comes up is strategy formulation, right? Now... It, uh, for R&D strategy, it deals not just with the decision to become a leader or follower in technology and market entry, but also is a source with the source of technology. Should company develop its own technology or purchase from others? That's really needed. Okay, so it should also take into account a company's particular mix of basic versus applied and product versus process R&D. So. Product versus process R&D, what is it? Okay. At the early stages, it's the product innovations plays the vital role. Product innovations, because what happens? The physical attributes and capabilities of a product that affect the financial uh, performance. In the later stage, it's the process innovations, which plays a vital role because it uh, process innovation means we're talking of manufacture facilities, a product quality, fast distribution. So it helps to maintain the firm's, the uh, product's economic returns, right? Then comes up is technology sourcing. Uh, most important thing is to decide whether it will be an in-house technology, R&D, or it has to be a make and make or buy. Well, though like in-house R&D will be, this plays a vital role, but sometimes uh, firms can also uh, by R and D capabilities of competitors, suppliers, and other organizations, they can also do that. But uh, what happens up here is, and we uh, there one has to have the technical, technological competence. There has to be a minimum R and D capability, right? If the in order to correctly value uh, assess the value of technology developed by others, if you are actually taking tech borrowing technology. Just purchasing technology is not enough, but we want the company should know how to use it, whether they have the competence to use it. That's really, really important. Okay. Next comes up is role of management. Okay. Now, due to increased uh, competition and accelerated product uh, development cycles, innovation and management of technology are becoming crucial to corporate success. Okay, and so what is today new product development is positively associated with corporate performance. Like uh, what is happening today is uh, when we talk of uh, product development, it's uh, what is uh, we we are talking too much on R and D, but we strategy, but we do not talk give or we give less importance of how a company can generate a significant return from investment in R&D, as well as, as overall sense of enthusiasm 
how to develop a sense of enthusiasm for innovative behavior and risk taking. Right. So that's where the role of management comes into play. One way to do is to introduce the innovation in the corporate state mission statement. Say so Intel has this delight our customers, employees, and shareholders by relentlessly delivering the platform and technology advancements that become essential to the way we work and live. Other way is by establishing policies that support the innovative process. And it should start from the top level, the board and the management up there. And if they are not interested in these topics, managers who are below them will also lack interest. Okay. So last topic that we have, entrepreneurial ventures and small businesses. Small businesses. Now, 99% of all businesses that we have Right, it's uh, small business. They are small businesses. That's 23 million small businesses, and 60 to 80 percent new jobs are created annually by them. It employs less than 500 people. Sales of less than 20 million US dollars annually. Small business firm. What is a small business firm? Which independently is owned independently and operated. It's not dominant in a particular field not engaged in any innovative practices, right? On the other hand, entrepreneurial venture is talking of profitability and growth, and it is talking of innovative strategy and practices. So the difference between small business and entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ventures is not in types of goods and services, but it's with regards to the views of growth and innovation. Now, who is an entrepreneur? Has to be an ultimate strategist and operating at all three levels, that is corporate, business, and functional. Let's look into small businesses a little more on it. They, there is lack of strategic planning in small businesses. Why? These are the reasons why we have it. They do not have enough time. They are quite unfamiliar with the concept of strategic planning. There is skills, lack of skills, sufficient skills, and there is lack of trust and openness amongst people, the team members. With regards to degree of formality, it's uh, the process is far more informal in small companies than in big corporations. Okay, let's look into the uh, the differences between big companies and small firms. Formal, when we talk of formal, we are talking of big companies and informal is small companies. So there is similarity. When we talk of mission statements, here we talk of, in case of informal, what do we stand for? When we say set objectives, it, in other words, in small businesses, it means what are we trying to achieve? When we talk of formulate strategy, it means how are we going to get there? How can we beat the competition? When we talk of policy determination it talks of what sort of ground rules should we all be following to get the job done correctly established programs talks about how should we organize the operation to get what we want done as cheap as possible with the highest quality possible when we talk of preparing performa budgets it talks of how much is it going to cost us and where can we get the cash when we talk of specified procedure we're talking of in how much detail do we have to lay things out so that everybody knows what to do? And when we talk of to determine performance measures, we are talking of what are those few key things that will determine whether we can make it and how can we make keep track of them? Okay. Now, on entrepreneurial ventures, strategic, how to go about with the strategic decision-making process. First is to develop the basic business idea with regards to product or service, but keeping in mind the target market and customers, then comes up to scan the external environment where it's uh, the factors, one has to locate for factors of opportunity and threat, then comes up to scan the internal internal env internal factors, which is relevant to the new business, and then analyze the strategic factors, their current situation is analyzed using SWOT, then decision has to be made whether to go on with this venture or not, whether there's opportunity or not, okay? Then, then comes up is to generate, finally, to generate business plans where the idea is transformed into reality. This is the process, entire process. And this, this, this is talking of 
the when you write a business plan what are the steps to be taken this is also the process of how to prepare a business plan advisory boards on a business, on an entrepreneurial venture is <clears throat> there are external business people who are who's voluntary it's voluntary done there's no money no payment done they discuss on strategic and other issues they need the this uh, the entrepreneurial ventures has to comply with the sarbanes oxley act and there has the sources of innovation it can be unexpected it can, these are the some of the sources the in concrete it could be based on a process need there could be changes in industry or market structure also if there could be like with regards to demographics change in perception mood meaning new knowledge okay what are the factors that affect the new businesses right one is the structure of the industry this is very important right which industry are, is are you operating the structure not just structure of the industry but also the business strategy or your own business strategy and characteristics your characteristics as an entrepreneur behavior characteristics these are three things okay so what should be the ideal characteristics of an entrepreneur someone who should have these are the things right someone who should have better or i can identify opportunities in a better way should have that foresight should identify the sense of urgency that is action oriented should have detailed knowledge that is physical stamina that we are talking of and also should have access to outside help okay it's small businesses the sub stages of small businesses are as we see is it it's a uh, you're talking of first comes up is existence you need to exist then comes up to survive once you know that you'll be able to survive then talk of success how to achieve and then start taking off and finally coming up to resource maturity okay evaluation and control now it's quite different it's different here in case uh, as compared to small big some big businesses so the line between debt and equity is blurred it's not clearly defined the lifestyle is the lifestyle is part of the financial state the lifestyle of the business small businesses here the standard financial formulas don't apply here personal preferences matter and banks combine personal and business wealth in case of small businesses when they give money so these are the references yep that's all that we have it so if there is any further uh, questions that you have let me know and uh, otherwise what we can do is uh, that's all that we have from here so okay